2018's God of War is one of the greatest video games ever made. You could try and change my mind down in the comments, but you know I'm right. After carving the Leviathan Axe last year, I really wanted to do another God of War project, specifically around one of my favorite elements in the game, the shrines. Here, boy, another one. Boy, over here. Another one here. The shrines tell a story of the world around Kratos and Atreus, and the stories of the gods that make up the pantheon of Nordic mythology. But ultimately, these shrines tell a story about a family. I mean, a messed up family. A very, very messed up family. Oh, it's a long story, but we'll get to it. After a failed attempt at making a cabinet for my hand tools, I wanted to try again. With God of War Ragnarok coming out, I've been playing through God of War again. And in seeing all the shrines, it made me want to create a cabinet that looks like a shrine from the game. Because I realized that not only can I make a good looking cabinet for my hand tools, I can make one that tells the story of my family. For the moment, I'm doing more research by playing the game. Although playing too much God of War does come with side effects. Boy. It is time to build. Let's do this. After getting some references, the first thing to do was to model the cabinet in SketchUp. Now this model you can see in augmented reality if you want to check out what this cabinet would look like in your space. You can use the QR code or there's going to be a link in the description. After printing out a cut list for the cabinet, I got to work cutting out the pieces. The wood for this cabinet I'm making with a combination of mahogany and cherry. You would think that since this is a cabinet for hand tools that I would make the entire thing out of hand tools, right? With like dovetail joints and fancy woodwork and whatnot. But I tried that last time. And it didn't work out too well. So this time I'm gonna use the right tools for the job, for me. The assembly of the frame was pretty straightforward. One thing that I did do throughout this entire project was to add wood plugs to each of the holes that I drilled. For the sake of contrast, I added cherry plugs in the mahogany holes and mahogany plugs in the cherry holes. All of the pieces are cut out and are ready to go. So the next thing I need to do is to figure out how I'm gonna do all of the carvings. I wanna carve the header, I wanna carve the doors, and the back on the inside of the cabinet, just like the murals are in the game. So I need to do some research and get some screenshots to get ideas for how I'm gonna do all of this. I designed some pieces that had a similar look to the game and decided that the stories that I wanted to tell on the doors of the cabinets were forging all of the weapons that we've made over the years and the Legend of Zelda houses that we built. When I was in the planning stages for this project, one of the things that I had to figure out was how to match the figures that are found on the inside of the shrine. In the game, these pieces are metal, they have this hand-forged look, and in wanting to replicate those, I didn't know how to make wood look like metal, 
I reached out on Instagram and got some feedback saying that I should try gold leaf foil. Since the figures in the shrines are a combination of bronze and gold and silver, I got foil for each of those colors and gilding adhesive to foil these pieces and try to make them look metallic. And it works really well, look at that. It's a fun process, it's kind of a nerve wracking process, but I need to replicate this process across all of these other pieces. For the doors, I needed to mark where the painted backgrounds were going to be. So I laid out all my metallicized wood pieces and then marked and painted. In the game, the shrines have these runes that name the characters that are part of the murals or talking about the story and whatnot. And I wanted to have runes in my cabinet to, to match this. So what I did is I went online and I found one of these text to rune generators, entered the text that I wanted to, copied it over into Inkscape, turned it into a vector so that I could have runes in my own cabinet, naming the characters, talking about the, the stories that I'm presenting here in my cabinet. In the game, the front of the doors have these subtle carvings on them. So I took a knotwork design that I liked and carved that design out using my CNC. Is it cheating? Probably. The posts have a simple crisscross pattern, so I started by drawing a not entirely straight line. One thing that I have to keep reminding myself is that in the game, these shrines were handmade with ancient type tools. And so there's gonna be elements of imperfection in them. The last thing I need to figure out is how to hang my hand tools in this cabinet. Because there's gonna be artwork in the back, I don't want to like put permanent shelves in here and cover up that artwork. And so I was trying to think of a way to have a system to where you can have removable shelves. A solution for removable shelves would be a dovetail joint in the back to where you can take the shelves out, you can you rearrange them, do whatever. But again, I don't wanna cover up the artwork in the back. So I have the thought, what if I keep that dovetail joint, but instead of having it on the back, why not put them on the sides so that I can have removable shells that fit into dovetail joints on the sides. So that's what I'm gonna do.
You know, one of the great things about these shelves is the fact that because they're removable, if in the future, I wanna change the arrangement of my tools, if I wanna take tools out, if I wanna to add tools, all I need to do is remove the shelf, make a new one, and put it in. The last piece to carve out was the header. Now, originally my idea was to try and do 3D CNC knot work for the header, but I couldn't get that to work. So as an alternative, I busted out my plotter and I made a stencil. With all of the pieces painted and ready, I then added finish to everything. Right, everything is ready to start assembling. Well, almost everything. There it is. Hello there. The pirate one sends his regards. Now this project is a collaboration between a few people. Aaron, who has helped me in the past come up with models for projects, helped me come up with a model for this cabinet. I built the cabinet, and then Brett from Skull and Spade did, well, you gotta see this. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? Now that I have all the pieces together, I can assemble this project. To add some lubrication between the posts and the hinges, I added some paste wax to the end of each post. To assemble everything, what I'm doing is marking the locations that I want to put screws. adding a little bit of epoxy to the bottom of the metal pieces, and then screwing all the pieces down. <laughs> look at this, look, 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 look. Word of advice when drilling metal, Slow speed, lots of lubricant, and even more patience. Because everything was so well designed ahead of time, assembling it all was easy. The iconic opening scene of God of War shows Kratos at a tree with a glowing gold handprint of his wife, Faye. Wanting to replicate that in my cabinet, I prepped the back panel by painting it black to contrast the gold handprints that we were about to put on it. Enough. 
perfect. Right. I promised myself that I wasn't gonna open this until the cabinet was done, and now that the cabinet is done, let's do this. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, hey. Hey, this is a great opportunity for me to thank a few people who literally helped to make this project possible. The first one is Aaron for all of his help designing out the initial design for this cabinet in SketchUp, the model of which was the basis for building this entire cabinet. For Brett over at Skull and Spade, who did all of this amazing metal work. I mean, seriously, look at, look at that. He has a video out now showing how he did all of the metal work, especially the braiding. Uh, you definitely need to go watch that video. <laughs> and I can't talk about the projects that I make without thanking my patrons and all of their support in helping make videos and projects like this possible. And thank you especially to all of my patrons for your patience. Uh, it's just me that does these projects, filming it, putting all of the videos and the plans and all that kind of stuff together. Uh, and sometimes that takes time. And so thank you for your patience as I work on epically cool stuff like this. It really does help. I'm gonna leave a list of links in the description uh, for some of the tools that I use, links to other things that I think you should check out. This shirt that I was wearing in the introduction is from a channel called Good Blood. He has an amazing video essay about God of War that you should go watch and uh, buy his shirt. Uh, help support him because the stuff that he makes is absolutely incredible. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. And thanks to you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. This is one of my favorite builds ever. If you liked it as well, uh, hit the like button, do all the things for engagement, like go down in the comments. Uh, let me know where in my shop do you think I should put this? Should I hang it on a wall? Should I put it on a shelf? I'm still trying to decide. 
I'm gonna go play some God of War, and until next time, you should go build a good story.